So you'd realize that as, as we go through scripture, we, 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 speak about, we speak about everything that is spiritual that God has to constitute. But what surprises you is the results that should be are not seen. The results that should be seen are not the results that becomes tangible. Praise God. Praise God, somebody. Praise God, somebody. So I want us today to pray, and your prayer is you are saying, God, I want to allow you that today as we immerse with the service, may your hand be seen, and we pray that may your power be revealed. I want you to open up your mouth and begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Maluka barus etom balakata wa balakatai. Brande cantos apala de brekato wa balakatai. Mezwala da brekantos adrekatom malakataya. Zeweberre de cantandendo was ata. We thank you and we bless your name, Spirit of the living God. We say, may your name be seen and may your power be revealed. We pray, mighty God, that as we go throughout this service, mighty Father, mighty God, malende kaparudai, we pray, Jesus, metoa aleta, manto kasote kapalatai. We decree and we declare that may you come to a place where you touch, transform, and reveal your power in the name of Jesus. We Pray, Kalonde Kalatakai, Lando Kasandre Kante Kaskota, Letawe Mayata, Mante Katewa Baredakai. By the power of the Holy Ghost, we decree and declare that we shall see your power, we shall see your grace, we shall see your anointing. In the name of Jesus, Kalisma and Katoa Baatema Azbe Atakai. Oh, Zamande Katawa Bareta Kando Kantos Ataya. We surrender ourselves, mighty Lord, to your will, and we decree and declare. We say, Have your way and have your will, O God. In the name of Jesus, Mary Father, we decree and we declare by the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, may you have your way. Spirit of the living God, may you have your way. Spirit of the living God, may you have your way. Lanto kasa tapa la kota mande katawa le riando kantons ke palamande katua malade kaya rade kalamado ba shale kai le de 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 wa parada kaya isande kapaya mante kasha pleke lona mande kai liandere kande kas kabaya la rewe mayata oh Jesus lando kawa balai kasubeda. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. Father, we thank you. We bless your name as we are gathered here. We pray, mighty God, that as your power is being revealed, may we be able to capture whatever you release in your spirit. May we not miss anything that you are speaking, any not and any instruction that you are giving us in our times in the name that is above every other name lord jesus we decree and declare that do what no man can do and take all the glory in jesus name god bless you i greet you all for being in the house of god just clap your hands and greet your neighbor clap your hands and greet your neighbor and say welcome 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 Praise God. You can be seated. Sit down, but don't go down. Yes. Praise God. The Bible declares that you are the head and not the tail. Amen. You are above and not beneath. Amen. Meaning you are not allowed in any circumstance to live a life that is below the standard of God. Yes. No matter, the, 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 there is a statement that says, no matter the economy of the jungle, the lion will never eat grass. So you have to understand that when you are a child of God, there is a life that you are, you are customized to by predestination. That it does not matter what is happening in your surrounding, that which he mandated is that which must happen in your life. 
And I believe that as I'm speaking, somebody is catching it in the spirit and claiming that which is theirs. And I pray that the power of God will come and overshadow you that in every circumstance that you are going through right now, it shall be the spirit of the Lord that shall carry you and it won't be by your strength. Uh, I love it when the Bible speaks in the book of Zechariah. The Bible declares and the Bible says that uh, say unto Zerubbabel, it's not by mighty, it's not by power, but by my spirit. I shall make the mountains to be plain. And I shall make, the Bible says, I shall make the mountains to be plain. And I shall make a river in the wilderness. So what God is trying to say is there is a dimension that I want believers to reach. Whereby they are not operating in the carnal mundane dimension. But as I invite them, they ascend into the celestial dimension where I am able not only to operate in their midst, but to use them in divine activities. Praise God. Praise God. So we will be starting on a very important subject where we are bringing awareness to the spirituality of believers and we'll be talking about the realm of the immortal. Look at anybody say the realm of the immortal. All right. So, so, so the, the foundation of this is very simple. Um, if, if you take your Bible to the book of John chapter 3 verse 16, our theme scripture, the scripture that we use in this mandate. Uh, the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have an everlasting life. Amen. You understand that the word eternal life there is one of the unpopular or one of the scriptures that many people spoke about but did not concentrate on that which God was trying to bring to light. Uh, when the Bible speaks about eternal life, the Bible is revealing a dimension of what is called everlasting life. A life injected to believers by the time they received him. Which is an unending life that is different from the carnal life or the limited life that you are living now. So, so, so eternal life is not just the life after death. But there are certain components that are given to believers when they get to a place where they get born again. That when they receive this eternal life, there is a certain way believers should operate that is that, that in as much as you are in this world, but you are connected to a realm of eternity. That certain provisions that you operate with in this dimension are not from the world. But you are connected to a realm of eternity. It is like a portal of eternity. Where we see you as a believer coming to a place where you are not only uh, depending on natural resources, but also you are able to tap into the common wealth of God and bring God's wealth, power, and assistance in your daily life. So, 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 that is why you would see that not only eternity, but also Jesus, as he was about to go, he, he said to the disciples, I will not leave you alone, but I'm going to leave you a helper who is the Holy Spirit. Now, now, he is trying to speak to the disciples that the dimension I'm bringing you, I do not want you to live a life whereby you think you are helpless. But I want you to live a life understanding that this eternal life is not only operating or existence in the celestial dimension, but you are able to translate it into your natural life. So he tells them and says, even when you pray, pray and say to God, our father who is in heaven, addressing where he is, hallowed be thy name, we praise you. Hallowed be thy name. Let thy kingdom come and let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That heaven is allowed and a kingdom, the kingdom is made up of two words, 
king and domain. The king and the domain is the territory he operates in. The domain is the territory the king operates in. So what God is trying to speak to us is there is a dimension where you are able to bring me into your level. Where I bring my kingship, my power as a king, my authority as a king into your domain. And invade your environment that the atmosphere becomes the atmosphere of my kingdom on your end. So in the book of Revelations, that is why the Bible says, and the angel celebrated and said, behold, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God. Am I communicating to somebody? So, so, so God is trying to bring us to that dimension where we, we capture God's kingdom, God's heart, and operate in this world. Now, 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 where you begin to understand this study, let us go to the book of Genesis chapter number 2 verse 7. Genesis. Alright. <laughs> it's Gene, the beginning. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Praise God. And the Lord God formed that is created the body of a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils. The breath of life. Somebody said the breath of life. The breath of life. And the man became a living being. An individual complete in body and in spirit. So, so as God was creating man, we need to understand the way he created man. Oh, the, 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 to those that have done um, building, they will say the infrastructure. When we talk about the infrastructure, there are a lot of things that are, that are included. For a building to stand, there are a lot of things that have to be included. Uh, the, the first thing we, we can talk about, the frame. There have to be a frame. The second thing, they say there has to be a, a shell. For a structure to be solid, you need a frame and you need a shell. So the Bible declares that when God began to create man, he took man out of dust. It means he took the raw materials in which he was about to create you. He mixed the materials according to his plan. And after he created the body, the Bible says, and the Lord breathed the breath of life. And the Bible says, and man became complete. The completeness of a man, it is the combination of the body and the spirit. The spirit without the body is, uh, is, 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 is useless in this earthly dimension. Because no spirit is allowed to operate on this mundane or canal or place where we are unless it is in a body. So you would see that even when God wants to operate, let me show you this. Without God, men cannot. And without men, God will not. Without God, men cannot. And without men, so you would realize and understand that the, there is an interdependency in the ecosystem of the spirit. Am I communicating to somebody? So, so when God was creating man, the Bible says, and God took the dust he had created, which is the body, the structure, and he breathed the breath of life, and man became a living soul. But it does not end there. There are a lot of things that the Bible begins to review. I wanted to catch this. You have to understand that man is divided into three parts. I wish I had a board. Man is divided into three parts. The body, the spirit, and the soul. But in their order of operation because the reason why God did it in that way is that you are a spirit man because you are connected to your creator but also you have to operate in this earthly dimension so we give you a body 
So it makes sense when God speaks to Jeremiah and he says, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 1.5, I believe. Jeremiah, before you were formed in the new womb of your mother, I knew you. I knew you as a spirit. And I predestined you as a prophet to the nations. Now, the prophet part is not just the spirit because you need the body to become a prophet. Because to become a prophet, you are reporting the things you have seen in the spirit. You cannot become a prophet when you die. Because spirits, spirits operate in a dimension of the now. So that's why you would see that there are certain operations where even angels need to learn from men. If we talk about the curriculum of prayer, or if we talk about the issue of prayer... Angels have to learn from men how to pray. Because angels don't pray. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. So, 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 there are, there are certain things that you now have to understand before we talk about the spiritual and the speaking in tongues. You have to get to a place where you know who you are and how you came to be and the fibers and the materials you are created with. Because if we go very far to be talking about visions and open visions and night visions and prophecies without you understanding the materials you were created from and how you should operate, you would realize that you may end up operating in error like a lot of people are doing, thinking you are doing the right thing. Because that is why there is what is called the familiar spirit. To every level there is effect. And to every fact, there is a counterfeit. Jesus. It can fit to counter, but it's not real. <laughs> am I communicating to somebody here? Amen. I said, am I communicating to somebody here? Amen. I said, am I communicating to somebody here? Amen. So you understand now that when you get through through scripture, when you get through through scripture, the Bible begins to open to us certain Truths. The Bible begins to open to us certain truths. So, when God created man, the Bible declares that after he created man, he breathed his soul and man became complete, which is in their completeness, they became a complete individual with the body and the spirit, operating with the body and the spirit. The body allowing you to be able to have activities on this earth and the spirit connecting you to the place where you are and the place where you are supposed to be. Am I communicating to somebody? Amen. That is why when you read your Bible in the book of Proverbs 20 verse 27. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 27. I want you to open Proverbs chapter 20 verse 27. Proverbs 20 verse 27. The Bible says, and the spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord, searching and examining the inner part of his being. So the Lord needs your spirit for him to have access because he's spirit. So he is spirit for him to have access in you. He needs what? Your spirit. That, that is the same spirit that the day you get to a place where you die or expire, when the body expires, the spirit is the one that will ascend with you to that dimension. Am I communicating to somebody? The spirit is the one that will ascend with you to that celestial dimension. Amen. Now, you have to understand something. That now that you understand that you are spirit, you are spirit, what are the territories you have to operate in and how are you to merge and operate in your daily duties but also including the spirit in your matters? Because that is the greatest problem a lot of people are facing where they they they, 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 they 
they, their spirituality might be their focus, but there are also certain responsibilities they have that may be the reasons their time is taken and their focus is taken. And there has to be a way in which you have to operate in a standard way. Am I communicating to somebody here? Amen. I said, am I, oper am I talking to somebody here? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. So when you read your Bible, the Bible makes it very clear. The spirit of the Lord is the candle of a man. The spirit of the Lord is the what? The candle. So if God wants to search what is happening in the fibers of your being, he needs your spirit. Unless there is that connection, it is hard for him to be able to capture or for him to be able to work and operate with you. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God, somebody. Amen. Jude chapter number one, verse 20. It's only one chapter before Revelations. Jude 20. Praise God. Amen. Jude 20. Beloved, but you, beloved, build your holy selves up, the foundations of your most holy faith, continually progressing like an edifice, higher and higher, praying in the spirit. So you have to understand that there is a building that has to happen in you as a being. There is a building that has to operate in you as a being. Praise God. Amen. There is a building that has to happen. <laughs> you, you have to understand that there is a, a structural process that has to grow in a being. Yes. Because by the time you got to be deployed into the body you are with. You were not deployed as the full stature and the capacity of your full or maximum, um, not just authority, but maximum way of operating. So you now have to get to a place where you match the spirit that was with God, you. With the way you are living here, and outgrow the carnal mentality and operations Amen. till you get to a place whereby your predestined life overrides the carnal or, can, or, or the carnal systems that are in this earth. Unless you get to a place where you ascend to that level, you will still be subject to the manipulations. Uh, the, 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 the strongholds and the systems of this world. Amen. So when Jesus came, that's when you realize that the Bible tells us that when Jesus came, when Jesus came to be in this earthly dimension, what began to happen to Jesus is in as much as he was God, he had to build himself for 30 years and did his ministry for three and a half years. The reason he was doing that, he was building himself and he was building capacity. Somebody say capacity. capacity. Somebody say capacity. capacity. He was building himself and he was building capacity. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. He was building himself and he was building capacity. So for 30 years, the man who was studying, the man who was understanding and mastering himself, mastering how to override temptations. So it took him 30 years. 
that when he fasted those 40 days, he was just cementing or putting the roofing. That when the enemy came to tempt him, the enemy did not have authority over him and the enemy could not use any system because the man already, he was no longer operating in the earthly dimension like all other men. He was not operating in his full stature is the Christ. So the problem becomes now, you as a believer and your spirit signals you, telling you that there is something more that you are created to do. There is something more in the inside of you. And you can feel that the life you are living is sort of like limited from that which God wants you to live. But for you to get to a place where you reach that dimension, there seems to be like there is a blockage that is there. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. Amen. And that is what makes many people, that is what makes many men to be frustrated when it comes to God's things. Because the spirit is expressively groaning in the inside. But in the physical dimension, there are limitations that are already there. <laughs> now, it is not the frustration of the spirit. Because what has been sent to fulfill mandate on this earthly dimension is the spirit, not, a, not the body. So, you, you, you feel pressure. Even sometimes when every provision has been supplied, even when you, you have... Every luxurious thing you may need, but there is something in you. That is saying the life you are feeling you are complete is not the life that I begged you to be. I always tell people that there are many people that die in the village, yet the world is in their hands. You can be content with the minimum Things that you are content with. Yet God is saying, but there is something more. Amen. You are content with what you are content. <laughs> but there is something more. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So God created man and he breathed the spirit. So breathing the spirit in the inside of you. He has put a part of himself in you. So in manufacturing you, there is a software that has been put in you. But what happens with a software is so, there has to be a way you have to be connected always because there are updates that have to be put. Though you have the hardware, the software needs updates. And also the hardware needs to get to a place where it is created in a way or it is built up in a way that it is able to capacitate the powerfulness of the software. Amen. So that is why you see that many believers seem as if they are limited. It seems as if they are limited. Because what is in them seems to be bigger than the capacity of the vessel that is carrying. Yes. Ah. <laughs> so here, Jude says, build up yourself. Build up yourself praying in the spirit. So it means there is capacity that has to be built because... Sometimes the frustration is what is in you is bigger than the vessel. That is why Jesus begins to explain and he says, we cannot put new wine in an old wineskin because the old wineskin will burst. It is an example when you look at a person who's gifted in the house of God and in as much as many gifted people, they are the most stubborn, miscellaneous people. If you want to see stubborn people, find gifted people. Especially if the gifting does not find expression. Am I communicating to somebody? 
Whenever you identify certain people that are stubborn, if you really check, you'll be surprised of the hidden gifts that they carry. Sometimes it is the inability to identify how to express that makes a person to be like that. Because something in the inside is eating and pushing. <laughs> Am I communicating to somebody? Amen. So it says build up your holy self. So you coming to that point where you are created by God, you are coming and God has told you, I have called you to become a prophet to the nations. But you are coming to operate in this dimension and there seems to be a lot of hindrances to what God created you to be. Like Isaiah, you are born out of a land where there are filthy people and you are trying to live holy. Because your calling requires you to be so. <laughs> requires you to be so. You are carrying a gifting for nations, but you live in a system that is trying to hinder you financially. That in as much as you have and you feel that there is more that I can do, God is calling me to nations, taking care of people and all those things. But there, is, there seems to be something that blocks you from fulfilling that mandate. The frustration of feeling the drive and you can feel that this is what I am supposed to do. But there are physical and natural hindrances and obstacles that are hindering you and you feel that I am behind time. And a lot of people are in this space and in this place. When now you begin to see that the, 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 the inability to build themselves to capacity becomes the problem. And now they begin to believe that there is a problem that they are facing. One of the reasons people are not stable, it is the availability of the sense of a problem. Every time I see migration, I understand that there is a consciousness of a problem in a person. It is biblical. It's biblical. Every time a problem arises, there is migration. <laughs> Every time you are cornered with a problem, you feel like moving. It's, 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 it's systematic. It's systematic. Every time you go through pain, you feel you have to what? <laughs> and the enemy, that is why you see the enemy, when he came to Jesus, after Jesus built his capacity, he began to tempt Jesus with natural things, but Jesus was now understand that there is a provision I'm given. Even he came to a place where he brought Jesus and he showed him the kingdoms of the world. And he said to Jesus, bow down and I'll give you the kingdoms of this world, which was monies and all those things. And Jesus says, <laughs> Jesus began to speak to him about how God supplies. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Men shall not live with bread alone. It sounds temp tempting. It sounds tempting. Understanding that for, for you to fulfill your mandate, you need the kingdoms of this world. It's not just about preaching, ladies and gentlemen. You need governments to open their ears to your voice. Because for policies to be put, for the gospel to be easy, there has to be people in authority. I, I, I heard someone boldly posting what they were posting and they said, um, you cannot be politicking and be praying. And because I'm not a person who loves to comment, I commented in my heart. <laughs> and I said, so how did David do it? How did Daniel do it? How did Joseph do it? Am I communicating to somebody? Am I communicating to somebody? Because in the first place, Samuel was a king and a prophet. 
My God, we get into somebody. So, build up your holy self. So that is why you realize that most of the times there is a drive that you feel the Holy Spirit pushing you to pray. And it seems as if the more you are praying, it pushes you to pray so that you, the capacity of the vessel can be increased. Because the revelation cannot be revealed into you unless there is capacity for that revelation to be fruitful. God does not waste, listen to me, one of the weapons of warfare is revelation. One of the weapons that heaven uses as a system to elevation, it is revelation. That is why you see Apostle Paul spoke something profound. He said, I ascended by revelation. There is no rising of any believer without a revelation. Amen. For any believer to rise, there has to be revelation. Yes. Amen. The Bible tells us about Jericho. That the, 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 the people of Jericho were in the city, got surrounded by a wall, a wall that the width of the wall, two trucks can pass. Two trucks can pass the width of the wall. And I think they, they said it was 20 meters. I'll come with direct calculations. So that was the width of the wall. But something will surprise you in scripture. There is something that will surprise you. That in as much as the width of the wall was like that, God said, I want you in as much as, been, if, as you have an army to surround and go around the city. So for seven days, they were going around the city. Doing nothing. And God was showing them the walls and how strong the walls was for seven days. How even if they have an army, they cannot penetrate through the walls for seven days. And in that place, God is trying to show them that there are certain battles that as long as you are dependent on fleshly materials and fleshly resources, it is impossible for you to get to a place where you can conquer over Jew or have authority in certain places. You need spiritual materials or you need spiritual provision and assistance. So, <laughs> so, 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 they rounded it for seven days, and the Bible says, on the last day, the Bible says, and God said, I want you to put the priest in front. And while men finish this, they're going around. I want these men to shout and blow trumpets. These are priests ordained by God and these are men that have access to the whole of holies. Now, you understand that the reason why sound is needed is because to anyone who has ever done building, there are things that you are taught there if you did sciences before. If you studied science, did you study sciences? I don't know what you studied. <laughs> Anything you studied that was not sciences, or oh, come back to sciences, you feel it here. Praise God. Amen. Now, you realize that when a structure is built and people vacate the building for five years, cracks are quickly visible and seen. Why? Because vibrations strengthen buildings. The more you speak, the more the, 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 the force of the building is strengthened. 
you are into construction. Am, am I speaking right? So, so men are needed in the building for the building to be strong. So if men are absent from the building, it is easy for you to see cracks and the building collapsing. It is easy for you to enter into a building and say, people have not been staying here for long. That even without too much cleaning, as long as men are sitting, there are certain insects that will never be visible Amen. in open. Mm -hmm. ah, yeah. So the Bible tells us that God has used the things of this world to show us the spiritual. We are already in class now. So there are certain things that will not be visible when believers are vocal. You will not see the visibility of spider webs everywhere, even on the TVs. And two men become absent. Just be absent for one month. You come back, you will see. In a room where you can stay for one month without cleaning, in the room where you stay for one month and you are not there, without cleaning, there is a difference. Amen. So, you, you, so, in, so, in science now, you realize that the presence of people and the more people speak, it strengthens the structure. Vibrations. People will just quote the word speak and post me on social media. Vibrations. <laughs> they strengthen the structure. So when Jude says, build up your most holy soul of praying in the spirit, he's saying that this structure you see, it needs vibration. Kamahisomila otomina kodena asua. Vilami dekene opanoko jekene urekei alomtai veskus epun aparahiadahai. Lelusma atembera hato zofini opene kajera ta aide kula. Lezure tenduri datute jidigidi autanekai. Agugankum igigidokoto geloto kodi brefina jagangu ge go ga ga gu e dudu ga broto do 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 Tutu makaduru delusa resumina adu dega go eku baka rugala chungen dan dongen gengu rakakakakakukukuponde itu majalusa mezuala mandu mesua aruvina chandu medera liso aduma egagagamuna katom itu kam akakatuka pupam grobi You begin to feel that there is something happening. Even if you did want to speak, there is something that is propelling and boiling from the inside, not from the body. Ah, from the being that was with God before you were here, something is building up. Something is building up. And already by that, there is an atmosphere you are feeling around you. Even in your body, you are feeling muscles. Why? Because you are now collect, connecting to your resources that are supernatural, not here. Am I communicating to somebody? Amen. That is why 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 shows you what I'm talking about. So the structure has to be built. And there has to be vocality. All right. What does this man speak about? First Corinthians 3, verse 16. Do you not know or understand that you, the church, are the temple of God and the spirit dwells permanently in you, collectively and individually? Look at him and say, I'm the temple. I'm the temple. So, 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 
if you are the temple, the spirit lives in you. you it means you are a structure. Right. It's you are a structure. Mm. Collectively, you you there is the administrations happening in you. So when Jude says, build up yourself, he's saying in as much as you are this structure, there is a way it has to find expression that your templehood is not just a verbal, a, a verbal declaration, but the whole, the whole um, showcase or expression of that temple is seen from the presence of God. Because the temple, that's where the presence lives. It has to be visibly seen. So you build yourself to that level. You have to build yourself to that level. Until you come to a place where that immortal structure comes. Where you can now declare your will is now being done on earth as it is in heaven. Where God is now residing in you because God does not reside in a body. He resides in a temple. That's why now your body is to be changed to become a temple. Amen. So becoming a temple, there are conditions that are to be seen. Every room you enter, conditions are there. You enter a hospital, there are things, rules that should be followed. So you realize that that is why you see when men begin to consecrate themselves in God, there are certain appetites that begins to die, certain principles that they begin to put on themselves. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. That's when you begin to see yourself, certain things are beginning to build up. These times of prayer, three times a day. You were not like that, but suddenly... There is something in you that is structuring. Amen. And well, you think those are times you are setting for prayer, but actually those are appointments that you are downloading from the spirit where God wants you in his presence to save. Amen. Amen. You are thinking there are times, that's why you see, Times that I said to meet with God, the moment they arrive, something changes in me. There is a certain thing that is not me, but a, a certain seriousness or irritative thing that comes. Why? Because when you download, it is no longer just you. It is specific time zones. God meets with people in time zones. The Bible says, and God would visit Adam at the cool of the day. That was the time programmed. Everyone has a timetable in the spirit where God calls you on appointments. Mm. Oh, okay. So, so you feel, oh, I, I don't know, three o'clock at after, I need to go and pray. No, 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 no. You are being called. I want you to build yourself to a place whereby my presence becomes an expression. So you, you, you are building yourself gradually. And you, you are thinking it's just you know you are building yourself until you come to the full stature. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So when you read in Romans, we are going to be touching on this from next week. Romans chapter number 12, verse 1 to 2. We can go there. Romans 12, verse 1 to 2. Therefore, I give you, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the message of God, say by the message of God. To present your bodies, dedicating all yourselves, set apart as a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God, which is your rational, logical, intelligent act of worship. Look at verse number two. Do not be conformed any longer to the superficial values and customs of this world, but be transformed progressively, changed as, nature, as you mature spiritually by renewing your mind 
focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove, say prove, for yourselves what the will of God is. Hmm, we are getting there. That which is good, acceptable, perfect in his plan and purpose for you. So when you are building yourself, understanding, I know people have been talking about priesthood, but if we talk about priesthood and missing the aspect of templehood, we have missed it. Because priesthood are the activities that occur in a temple. <laughs> so if we overemphasize on priesthood without emphasizing on the temple, we might have people that are active without being effective. Jesus. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. So Paul says, I urge you by the message of God that you present yourself as a living sacrifice, not as dead. God does not want you to go and crucify yourself today. No, I want you alive. But as you are alive, I want you to become a sacrifice. I want you to become a what? A sacrifice. a sacrifice. Now, do you know that one of the things about a sacrifice is that when you become a sacrifice, it means you are dead. That is why most of the prophets in the Bible, many people, they say those men were heartless because they were dead. They were not heartless. But because when God's instructions come, you do not need to have an interference of the, 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 the natural or physical or logical, factual disruptions. Because spiritual things are to be endowed spiritually with spiritual people that have given themselves to spiritual work. So he says, I want you to present yourself because this will become your reasonable service. So meaning you have to die to flesh. The, unless certain things die in you as a natural man, there is no way you can be alive in the spiritual. I hear what I'm saying. Amen. I hear what I'm saying. So certain things that we call temptations and sin, they were created by God. I know someone is going to quote me here. Certain things we call temptations and sins, they were created by God so that they, be, they can become yardsticks so that you can measure for yourself Amen. whether you are operating as a living sacrifice or that your flesh is still alive. So as long as you see yourself falling into the temptation or making sure that you see it is an indication or an indicator that your flesh is still alive. Yes. So sin was not created by the devil. That is why if you study sciences, <laughs> you would understand that there are chemicals in a lab and those chemicals, all of them, they are good, but they are not allowed to be mixed together. Yes. They, uh, they say when you mix potassium permanganate with water, what happens? Manganese. What happens? <laughs> All right, so, so you realize that all of them, they are right. The chemicals. A chemical you can put in water to purify water. If it is mixed with another chemical, it can become poison. Yes. Coming from the same lab. So sin did not come from the devil. No, it was created by God as a yardstick. So that men that are spiritual, by the time you feel much weight falling to the temptation, you understand that there are certain aspects of the spirit that you have to deal with. 
So you direct yourself back to the place where now you begin to build yourself again. A few minutes ago, you were feeling like I have to go to that lady's house and let us do what we have to do. And suddenly you get into prayer and you begin to build yourself. Alusma jekuna legatoma nakatoma nakabreton akai dagangum gam rukatokopata kalakatom rata atua zekua manakatua. And something boils in you that kills the appetite of what you wanted to do. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. And whatever you were feeling, that consciousness was a carnal kind of consciousness, and also, in as much as it was a carnal, kind of, it was an indicator that you have detached your consciousness from the spirit, and your consciousness is now weighing more to the physical. That time when you feel you are useless, that consciousness is telling you. That you have detached from your mindset of faith, which is the mindset of Christ. And now you are too much carnal. That is why depression and anxiety is pulling you. Get back to the place where you build up yourself. As it is in heaven, so am I on earth. Atum malakatum. The Bible says, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in the heavenly glory. Zwam. Akakakakuma. Yekona lakataya. Natalia zalalia. Likandos ekriando kilia. Quick, quick, bingo come. Ekuma nakatumwa. Mikuma na come and buy without money, says the Lord. Laush. Etus alom atoa. Akonama nakatema lai. Eruama nakajikatai. Rigando kataya. Silver and gold is mine, says is the Lord. He cannot attire. That stress you were having suddenly disappears. And you come out of prayer. People are wondering what's happening. You are supposed to be paying rent tomorrow. But there is this way you will feel unbothered. And everything you stressed about since you were born, it was solved. But some of you, even after it was solved, you are now sick of blood pressure. Why? Because you were more on the physical side. There's no problem. That is unsolved. That time when you are thinking about it is already a prayer. Oh, God. Oh, God. L let me take you to the spirit. Do you remember that shoe that you wanted? When you wanted a new shoe? Hmm? Do you know that you got the shoe? But you never went into prayer to pray about it. But you got the shoe. Because unto him is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask or think. Most of the things you thought about happened. Because in the realm of the spirit, your thoughts are louder. God does not see words. Let me, let me, take, let me take you to, to, to Genesis. Oh God. I, I, I want to finish this very fast today. Let me take you to Genesis. Are you ready? Amen. Are you ready? Oh, Kabolato Kaske Balatai. I believe it's Genesis chapter number six. I believe it's Genesis chapter number six. Hmm. What's your vision saying? Genesis six from verse three. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive. My spirit, my, listen, my spirit. Now, while God is speaking, you, you have to capture how God speaks. My spirit. He didn't say myself. He said, My spirit shall not strive. My he has already separated himself in the spirit. The spirit that was breathed in you, that is in you, 
He has separated himself to say, now I am in my sovereign authority, but I'm not talking in my capacity as a spirit. Uh -huh. My spirit shall not what? My spirit uh, shall not strive with a man forever. Uh -huh. For he is indeed flesh. He is indeed what? Flesh. Uh -huh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. Yet his days shall be 120 what? And 20 years. And what? 20 years. And 20 years. All right, jump, jump to verse number six. Okay, verse six. Mm -hmm. And the Lord, and the Lord was sorry mm -hmm. that he had made man on the earth, mm -hmm. and he was grieved in his heart. All right, go to verse number five. God was grieved in his heart. Now, 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 now. God has a heart, mm -hmm. <laughs> and God has feelings. All right. So, do you know that? <laughs> the, the time when your life is not equating to the way you want it to be at a certain time frame, it grieves him. What makes your spirit to feel under pressure, it is because God himself, who is saying my spirit, with the spirit that is in you, your spirit comes to a place where it captures what is in the heart of God. I'm going to explain it in a few minutes. You begin to get to a place where you feel at ease. Ah, I have to go for evangelism. Ah, I have to, I have to, I have to, 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 to give in the house of God. Ah, I have to pray. Why? Because the way you will be walking in that time is not in line with what God wants you to do. So your spirit is now pressurizing so that you get to a place where you are in right standing with God. Because whenever he makes even an appointment with you and you don't pitch in, it grieves him. That's why the Bible says, do not grieve the spirit of God. He has feelings. He has a mind. For I know the plans that I have for you. <laughs> uh -huh. Read it. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of men was great no. in the earth. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of men was great in the earth. Now listen. And that every intent of the thoughts of his every what? Intent of the what? Thoughts of his heart. No, 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 no. Was only evil continually. Now, why did God create them? D d d uh, destroy them. Read verse number five. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness. The Lord saw that the wickedness of men was great in the earth. That was okay, because men are wicked. Uh -huh. And that every intent of the and of his heart was only that every intent of the what? Of the thoughts. Of the thoughts of his what? Of his heart. So, these are sins that are not yet done. That God is saying, I'm coming to destroy you. <laughs> It's things that are not done, but God is saying, say, oh, you see it when Cain killed Abel, before he killed Abel, do you know what God said to Cain? Can we go there? <laughs> we can go there. My God. My God. Verse now, uh, Genesis 4, verse 7. Uh -huh. If you do well, if you do well, will you not be accepted? Will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. Sin lies at the door. And its desire is for you, but you should not rule over. Its desire is for you, but you should have rule over it. Now. Hey, so malaka. My, my vision says you must master it. So before Cain had killed Abel, God came to speak to Cain. That is before he killed Abel. After the sacrifice, God came to speak to him. And God said, sin is crouching at the door of your heart. Master it. 
So already Cain was thinking about it. That's why God said, master it. If you understand this secret that your mind is more vocal in the spirit, there are certain things you will not entertain in your mind. There are people you killed before they died. <laughs> there are cars that have been built before they were built. Houses that have been built before they were built in the spirit. And they have become tangible. Listen to me. The moment something becomes so tangible in the spirit, it's about to manifest in the physical. The reason why things don't manifest in the physical is because in the spirit, it has not yet become tangible. Until your spirit is able to touch it in the spirit and it becomes visible, be guaranteed it's about to happen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, there, is a, there is a saying that says every woman knows that day they were pregnant. They got pregnant. Something hits in the inside. Say, mm, what happened today? Mm -mm, something is different. Uh, you have not kept... I, I, I'm already talking about the spirit. <laughs> Remember, a woman is the only being that can... <laughs> A woman is the only being that can bring a spirit to this end. <laughs> Am I communicating to somebody? Uh, no, let's go back to our scripture. Let's go back to our scripture. Romans chapter 12. So present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. For it is your reasonable service. Amen. Do not be conformed to the things of this world. So it means there is a dimension where you have to reach as a believer. That when your body has been sacrificed and you are now structurally building yourself in the holy place, there is a dimension where you can no longer conform to systems, operations, facts, and, uh, and, and knowledge of this world. There is a time when now your mind is separated. That's why the Bible declares that, for the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword, dividing unto asunder between the what? The marrow, dividing the soul and the spirit now. So the body, as it is made up, you understand it is made up of the spirit, the soul, and the what? <laughs> and the soul is the one that now regulates what happens between the spirit and the flesh. Now, your mind is very powerful. That is why the devil wants it. Why? Because it is your mind that regulates, and your mind is where the battle comes in now. So that when Jesus is building himself in the holy place, the reason why you must sacrifice yourself is so that when you are sacrificing your body, what are you doing? You are bringing your mind into discipline. You are bringing it into discipline. Why are you bringing it into discipline? All right. So, so the mind... So, conformation comes from the mind. And the soul now, the, the mind is in the soul. So, the soul is made up of three things. The will, the emotions, and the what? And the mind. The mind for factual and thinking. The will, ability to do. Where decisions are made. And your emotions. So all these things are the reasons that if they are not mastered, they will hinder the flow and the spirit and they will hinder the full expression of your spirit to your body. Oh. Every man's hindrance of his operations, many people when they speak, I hear many people talking, we, we are fighting against the flesh. Hear me, hear me. If the soul has been dealt with, the flesh is not a problem. I hear what I'm saying. I hear what I'm saying. Do you know that you can decide even on your appetites? 
Everyone who is a vegetarian was once eating meat. But there's a day when they decided through their mind. Am I communicating to somebody? And through the enabling of the spirit, now you can override the desires of the flesh. So when God created, he had to breathe the spirit and man became a living soul. But the mind now limits man. Come, let me show you something. Come. Now, do you believe you can suspend in the air? Do you believe <laughs> suspend in the air? Well, I don't know, but I believe it is possible. Now, you see, he believes. He believes. Now, let me show you another example. Right? Let me show you another example. Push the wall. 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 Now, while you are pushing, what's happening in your mind? Well, I know that it's not going to be this way. <laughs> now, now you, you begin to understand that already is answered. He believes, but he knows. Now, a lot of believers, they are limited in a dimension whereby in as much as they believe in God, but there is something they know. So, 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 so you would realize that if God says, push the wall, he does not need your mind because the instruction is to push. So, as long as now the flesh is still, the mind is too conformed to the system of the world. When God says, I'm going to make you a millionaire, you are now thinking of a business. You are now thinking of who to give you money. You are now thinking of the revenue authority. Yet, when God speaks, he's not speaking about systems. He's saying, believe. I don't want you to speak on your knowledge of what you know. So many people are limited from the spirit because they know. Many people are hindered from operating in the spirit because they know. So when God says, Adam, where are you? He says, I am hiding because I'm naked. God says, who told you? Because what you now know, you are not supposed to know. It can only be known if a certain information or virus has corrupted you. So if faith by hearing the word of God, it means doubt comes by hearing facts. So you can believe and still doubt. That's why Jesus says, you shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou shall cast into the sea. And if you do not doubt in your heart, it shall be so. So you can still say it and doubt it. So you can enter into prayer as Malakatoa. That is why now you need to get to a place. You can sit down. Thank you. That is why now you need to get to a place where you go back to Jude 20. Build up your holy self. In the spirit. Praying in the spirit. Not in the flesh. Praying in the spirit. So that you connect your network to your original network. Now, the reason is being, do not conform. We are still in the spirit. Do not conform to the things, of, but be transformed by the re renewing of your mind. That you might, that you might what? Read 12.2. That you might what? Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Romans 12. Verse 2. Uh-huh. And do not be conformed to, the, to this 
Now, so do not be conformed to this world. It means there is a world you need to operate from. Look at this. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind has got to be transformed. That you may prove what is good oh. and acceptable and perfect will of God. That you might prove. What oh, is what is your version saying? That you may what? You may prove for yourself what the will of God is. That you may prove for yourselves what the will of God is. Let me read you from mine. All right? That you may prove for yourselves and that you may know. So the word, the same word prove is the same word know. That know you are knowing that this world is not going to move. That you may know what is the will of God. <laughs> I hear what I'm saying. Amen. That you may what? Know what is the will of God. And every man in this world, the thing that stresses them the most is trying to know what is the will of God. And the Bible has shown us through this whole teaching we did that you can get to a place or a dimension where you know the will of God for your life. You can get to that place. Where you know the will of God for your life. We are going to get to a place where we are going to pray. We are going to get to a place where we are going to pray. You are building yourself in the Holy Ghost. And you are putting yourself to a place where you are saying, God, I want to know you. I want to get to a place where I build myself in my templehood. And I can operate in your purpose. Where I operate and walk in the blueprint of what God wants me to do. And that which he has created me to be. Amen. That is what God desires. That is what God desires. Sit upon your video, we are going to pray. Oh God, my God, say my father and my maker, my and my maker. as I begin to pray. Let, let, me show, let me show you something as we pray. Let me show you something as we pray. My God, let me show you something as we pray. So the reason why you have to prove, praise God. Amen. Praise God. When, when you read your Bible, when you read your Bible in the book of um, first, first Corinthians 2 verse 14. I speak that scripture every day. For a carnal man cannot receive the things of the spirit because they are spiritually discerned. They are spiritually so you need discernment. You need to discern. So we are going to get to a place where we are going to pray right now. That you get to a place where you download the will of God for your life. Amen. That every time you are walking, you have an understanding of what God wants you to do, where God wants you to be, and what he has for you. That is the biggest problem. What he has for you. You know, scripture tells us that there are things that are freely given to us. Sometimes we are praying over things that we are already given. We are going to pray. God, may I be able to receive from your spirit. Enlarge my capacity spiritually. That I may operate in my purpose. Say my father and my maker. My father and my maker. As I begin to pray. Enlarge my capacity in the spirit. May I operate as an immortal being. 